Hi everybody, welcome back. We are looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're looking at chapter 12, we're looking at the third declension, which is this new family of nouns. Today we're just going to practice uh, generating the declension just to give us a, a little bit more of a handle on how it works, just to test whether you've managed to learn the stuff since the previous video, and also it'll allow us to introduce some uh, slight quirks which uh, feature in the dative plural form of this declension. They're really, really, really not difficult. They're very obvious and intuitive. We'll get to them. They're right there on page 136. But just check it out here. It'll be very, very easy. Okay, so here goes. Here's a third declension noun. Herr Sarks, Sarkos. You know it's a third declension noun because it's listed like this with the article to tell you the gender and then two forms of the noun, one of which has the os ending. And so you know that is which case and gender. Well done. It's genitive singular, which means that this one is the nominative singular. So if you're trying to generate the declension, that's how you begin. Let's just get to it. So it's going to be sarx. Where do we go from here? Well, we know it's feminine. And so we know that it's the same form as the masculine uh, declension of aster, which we learned previously in the previous video. So we go sar. That's the stem. Sark. And then we just go through with the endings as appropriate. Sarka. Sarkos. And so on. Sarks, sarka, sarkos, sarki. Let's put another one up here. Sark S. Sarkas. Sarkone. That's the easy one to remember because it's genitive plural. All the nouns are like that in the genitive plural. And what is the dative plural going to be? Well, here's what we're expecting. We're expecting sa sarksin, aren't we? But just look at that for a second. Sarksin. Sarksin. Come on. What's going to happen to this noun? Through the pressure of simply how we pronounce it. Sarksin, sarksin. That x is going to turn to that, the xi, simply because that's how we pronounce it. People spell things in the way they pronounce them in Greek. Isn't it lovely? And so, oh dear, I'm going to get rid of that because that's otherwise going to be really messy. Here, that goes. Sarksin. Sarksin, sorry about the wonky writing, you can cope with that, I'm sure. Sarx, sarkas, sarkos, sarki, sarkes, sarkas, sarkon, sarksin. Now, this exemplifies one of the points Duff makes on page 136, section 12.2.1, the note on the dative plural, where he's got this table on the right hand side and he says that um, uh, there are some changes that happen if the stem ends in a certain noun. Well, look at the bottom line of that table. If the stem of the noun ends in a kappa or a gamma or what's the other one a chi then it will turn to a xi when it adds the sigma ending like that but you almost don't need to learn that do you it's just obvious because that's how you pronounce it you're not going to go gus you're going to go Gs. you're not going to go Gs. you're going to go Gs. just makes sense so that's the first example. You could have done that all on your own. Come back in one second and we'll do a couple more. Okay, here's another example. Hopus podos. By the way, I realise I didn't even tell you what sarx means, but you know what sarx means. If you've ever read a commentary on the New Testament or especially Paul the Apostle, sarx means flesh. There we are. You're not going to forget that in a hurry. It's all over Paul's writing. Hopus podos. Well, you can guess what this means uh, without even looking in the notes at the back of this chapter. Podiatry. Pod means foot. A podiatrist is somebody who helps you out with your feet if you've got collapsed arches or something like that. Okay, so that's what that means, but we're not interested in podiatry especially. We're interested in seeing can we generate the declension of this third declension noun by looking at this lexical form. Uh, hopus podos. Well, we know that it's masculine, which means it'll have the form that we've already seen with aster because 
Here's the stem in the genitive singular form and it ends with a consonant, so it's going to be like aster, which goes aster, astera, asteros, astere, asteres, asteras, asterone, aster sin. So we're just going to do that right here, except we need to remember pus, that's the nominative singular form. So we're ready to go, we can now generate this declension very easily. Ready? Pus. Nominative singular. And then we generate the rest of the declension just by having pod. Pod, 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 and adding the relevant ending to it. So should we do that? So aster, astera, or pus, poda, podos, well that's no surprise, that's the genitive singular one, they give you that right there. Podi, podes, podas, podon, that's easy, and then finally sin, except that, yep, once again, you notice that something strange is going to happen here. Oh my goodness, can I learn to write? Please, somebody teach me how to write on a whiteboard. Let me try it like this. Pod sin. Now, it just turns out that in Greek, saying pod sin, dz, 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 is a little bit tricky and as ever speech evolves to make words easier to say and then writing follows speech because it's derivative in effect on that primary form of communication and so you see again on page 136 you've got this little note on the dative plural and Duff notes that there are a number of uh, consonants which if they appear at the end of the stem they disappear completely on uh, when the dative plural ending is applied to them. So podsin actually goes to posin. Um, let's put that in like this, then you can see it more easily. Posin. So this is a full declension. Pus, poda, podos, podi, podes, podas, podom, posin. Now again, you don't really need to think of this as a, an irregular form of the noun. It's just a pronunciation thing. And you can imagine yourself as a Greek speaker. Anything that, where any word where the stem, third declension now, sorry, where the stem ends in a tau, a delta, uh, a theta, or a nu, uh, as Duff points out, that will elide or disappear in the dative plural form. Very straightforward. Let's come back, do one more in just a second. Okay, here's one more. Her guner gunaikos. We know what guner means, don't we? Well, you can check it in the back if you like. Guner. Okay, here's one more. Hey, guner, gynaikos. Any idea what this means? You might be able to guess. If you think of the word gynaecology, gynaecology, yet yeah, that's something that only really concerns uh, women. Ah. or wives directly. Hegunea gynaikos means a woman or a wife. And we know that this is a third declension noun because of the way it's listed in its lexical form. Hegunea gynaikos. We know moreover that this tells us that it's feminine because of hair. So the declension will be the same as for the masculine aster, asteros, because the declension nouns are the same in masculine and feminine form. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We know also that this is a nominative singular form, and we know moreover this is the genitive singular, and that that is the stem which will be found throughout the rest of the declension. So let's just get straight to it, change of colour, feeling like a bit of variety. Nominative singular is going to be guner, and then we're going to go gun i. That's the stem. Gunike. Os. Oh. Ha ha ha. Bad. Gunike. Ka, gnaikos, oh Jeff has got gnaikos, gnaike, gnaikes, gnaikas, gnaikone, and finally, gnai. Now, what's going to happen here? Remember back five or six minutes ago in this very same video, what happens to the kappa at the end of the stem in the dative plural when a sigma? is at the beginning of the ending. Good night. Kusin? No. 
for reasons of pronunciation, oh, let's get rid of the whole thing. There we are. Junai Xin. So there is the full declension. Junai, Junai, Kruk, Junai, Kros, Junai, Kit, Junai, Kes, Junai, Kas, Junai, Kong, Junai Xin. Not really an irregularity, just a pronunciation thing. You've got this nailed now. You're totally sorted up to page 136. You understand the third declension. You understand what's quirky about it, this nominative and genitive thing. The stem doesn't appear in the nominative singular. You know how to generate the full declension from the lexical form of the noun. Come back in the next video. We're going to look at a couple of irregular forms of um, the third declension noun. And then we're going to go straight on and look at new to forms of the third declension now and keep going 20 minutes a day 30 minutes a day five or six days a week and we'll nail this and have you reading the new testament in greek in no time at all god bless and bye for now